Hi, my name is Robert Hitlin. Today's three-phase problem-solving lesson is focused on operations and algebraic thinking standard number one, using addition and subtraction within 20 to solve word problems. The problem I selected for students involved adding with start unknown. My reason for choosing this type of problem is because the language of these problems can be difficult for students to understand. These types of problems can be found in the California Mathematics Framework for first grade. Because my students are first graders, I chose to only focus on two math practices. Math practice one, which calls for students to persevere and problem solve. And math practice three, which correlates to my language objectives, to have students discuss and answer questions of each other. So in today's math lesson, we're going to do a lot of talking and listening. So we have what they call a language objective. Language is listening and speaking, right? I incorporated an English language objective into my lesson because the majority of the students are English language learners. Do you guys remember when we read Swimmy? Yes. Okay, what was Swimmy about? Can you tell your partner what Swimmy was about? A school of fish. You guys remember that word, school? Yes. Okay, I want you to talk to your partner, and I want you to talk about what is a school of fish. All right, let's read it together. In the before phase of the lesson, I make sure students understand what the problem is asking. We clarify any unfamiliar vocabulary, and identify what information is given in the problem to help the students solve it. I do this by having the class read the problem aloud and by building in think, pair, share. Some fish were swimming in a school. Five more fish joined them. Five more fish joined them. What do they mean by joined? What does that word mean? Yes. That they came with daughter or girl. In this question, what are specifically, exactly are we trying to find out? Gael? We are trying to find out how many fish were there before. Okay, so boys and girls, do we agree that the question is asking how many fish were swimming before? Yeah, so let's underline that on our paper. How many f fish were swimming before? Boys and girls, what information do we know to help us solve the problem? Yes, Jimena? Circle five more fish. What other information do we have to help us solve the problem? Then there were 12 fish. Circle 12 fish. We're going to try to solve the problem in more than one way. Everyone look where my finger is, where it says explain. Explain how you know using models, pictures, numbers, or words. For this lesson, students had a variety of tools to select from to make sense and solve the problem. Would someone like to share with us what how we might show our work using models, pictures, numbers, or words? You can use counters and pictures and linking cubes. We're going to work on our problem for five minutes. I allowed my students five minutes of independent productive struggle time to find an entry point into the problem. Okay, so five minutes by yourself first. You guys ready to solve? Yes. All right, you may begin. So how many fish joined first? Five. Five. At this point in the lesson, I circulate, monitor, and guide student learning through questioning. If we already have five, how could we get to 12? What could we do? Count. count up. OK, let's count up. Did you work by yourself and try to solve the problem? Yes, so if you did that, you can check off. You can put an X or a check that you did that. 
That means you met the objective. Did you show your work, your problem solving in more than one way? Yes. Did you use counters, models, pictures, words? Yes. If you did that, you can check that box off too. Okay, so first, you're going to explain to your partner how you found your answer, and your partner is going to listen carefully. Remember we talked about that? Do you guys remember? Yes. And then you can ask your partner questions, how they solve their problem. Students have an opportunity now to share their thinking with their table partners. To facilitate this conversation, I provided students with discussion stems that help them formulate and verbalize their thoughts. Okay, so why did you choose five counters? Because it says five. I solved the problem by using fishes. Joined. Okay, so five more fish joined them. Did you ask each other questions? Okay, ask uh, Br uh, Brittany how she solved the problem. How did you solve the problem? I solved the problem by doing. Oh, okay. Can you restate what um, Brittany said? She got the part and she got the other part and she saw she found the missing part was seven. She found that the missing part was seven. What does that seven mean, like in the problem? Seven fish. Seven fish, right? Seven fish. As I circulated around the room, I looked for multiple solution paths by students to share in the after phase to advance the mathematical thinking of the entire class. So now we're going to have a few people share different strategies that they use to solve the problem. In the after phase, students share their strategies with their classmates. Gael shared a part-part-whole diagram Okay, let's look at what Gael did first. Think about what he did before we talk about it. Everyone's looking at it? Okay, now that you had a chance to look at what he did and think about it, turn, turn to your partner and think, what did he do? Students were familiar with this visual representation and it gave everyone access into the problem. Well, I wanted to do a part, part, whole. So I wanted to know that 5 plus 7 equals 12. What did you start with when you did the part, part, whole? The whole is right here. And what does that mean, the whole, in this problem? I found the 12 fish that were there in the storm. I allow students to discuss Gael's representation of the problem. Turn, turn to your partner and think, what did he do? Now that Gael had a chance to share his solution, does anyone have any questions for him? Gael, why don't you call on someone? I see a lot of hands. Why did you use a part-part hole? I wanted to use the part-part hole because I wanted to, to tell that the 12 is the hole and, and the 7 is the missing part and the 5 are the ones that come later. Jimena's solution path involved using counters to solve the problem. This strategy allows students to see how tools can be used to access and solve the problem. Counters are a concrete way for students who are struggling to visualize the problem. What do you think Jimena did to solve the problem? Let's think about it first. Everyone's looking at it. OK, when you're ready, talk to your partner about how do you think Jimena solved the problem?
I allowed students time to compare Gael's visual representation with Jimena's solution path. You have two different strategies. You have Jimena's strategy, and then you have Gael's strategy. I want you to think about what's the same or similar about the way they solve the problem, and what is different. When you're ready, please turn to your partner and talk about compare and contrast their strategies. Can someone share what was the same about Jimena's and Gael's strategies? They used the words to spread the map. The same was they both had the whole 12. They both had the whole 12. In, in Gael's strategy, in 12, the whole was in the part part whole. And in Jimena's strategy? In Jimena's strategy, the 12 was in the number sentence. In the number sentence and with the? With the counters. With the counters. All right, boys, it was now Gael and Jimena shared their strategies. We have one more student who's going to share their strategy. That's Eduardo. The next student, Eduardo, shared his number line with the class. The California framework calls for students to use a number line to add and subtract numbers. A number line is more abstract than the counter strategy. It helps students begin to see the relationships between numbers and is important in subsequent grade levels. There were five-ish there. Then I count for seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I two and then why did you count seven spaces to 12? Because that was the opening of the fish. Who can tell us why did Eduardo stop at 12 on his number line? Why didn't he go any further? There are 12 fish. To sum up the learning, I have students discuss all three student work samples. Brothers, today we saw three different strategies to solve our problem. We saw a uh, part part whole diagram, we saw counters, and we saw a number line. I want you to think, how was the number line similar to the counter strategy, similar to the part part whole diagram? Think about it first. How are they all the same? Okay, when you're ready to share, turn to your partner. At the closing of the lesson, I had students confirm that seven fish were in the school before the five joined. I have the same number as seven. Can we all say that or can we say what was the answer to our problem? They all had... They all had the answer seven. My next step is to have students write an equation using a symbol for the unknown.